This is Matthew Smalden for the Soldiers of Oxfordshire Museum. The date today is the 11th of July 2013. I shall be speaking with Joe Lewington in Bampton. We shall be discussing her experiences uh, regarding uh, prisoners of war where she lived in Croydon in Surrey after the Second World War. So to start, can I just ask when and where you were born? Uh, I was actually born in Croydon, but I moved to Yorkshire and war broke out when I was in Yorkshire and then back to Croydon. So uh, I was in Croydon seven, yeah, eight years old, something like that, uh, when war finished, yes. And can I ask when you were born? 1937. Thank you. Um, with regards to your experiences during the war, you, you said you were moved away to Yorkshire. Yes. You returned then at the end of the war? Uh, no, it was a little bit before because I remember um, raids. I can remember the woods around us being on fire with incendiary bombs, and one of the kids' games, as I remember, was going out and collecting the shrapnel the next day, and nobody worried about it, and going and collecting spent incendiary bombs and all this kind of thing. Uh, nobody thought anything about it. I mean, nobody said, "Don't do that; it's dangerous." We just thought that was good fun, and then part of the game was, "Did that happen around here?" Yeah. Yeah, and then you're swapping oh, yeah. big bits for little bits. That's right. I'm scared the police are going to come to get you. Oh, well, no, never had that. No, we just did it. Yes. So that was, yeah, that was wartime for us. Uh, I do remember uh, houses around our way being flattened, and we all had to go down into the little tiny Anderson shelter in the middle of the night and all this kind of thing. So the war was still on when I went back to Boyne, yes, but it, it broke out when I was in Yorkshire. Were you there then when the doodle bugs were? Yes, yes, and I can remember coming out of the Anderson shelter and my father saying, come out and watch this. Seeing the doodle bug going over and then Spitfires surfing it and attacking it. Because I think they were aiming at London and if they overshot or didn't go far enough, they could be downed in the countryside to do less harm. Yes, certainly can remember that. Remember the sound of them, yeah. And uh, then the V1 or 2s coming out later, yes, remember that too. And not scared, not scared. My parents must be really calm because as children we weren't scared at all. No. And with regards to the experience you had with prisoners of war, mm. was this at the end of the war, after the war had ended? As far as I remember, them? yes, yes. They were at the top of our road and they were involved in some kind of farm work. And then in another area they were involved in building the prefabs which went up after the war. And they were all mixed up with um, English workers as well. And it was all very um, companionable in a way. Nobody, mm. there, didn't, there didn't seem to be any bitterness between. I mean, I think the English regarded you know them as you know the victims as well, the victims of their own government. So, so there wasn't any bitterness between. But my father was also a teacher of German. So, um, and there must have been a camp. I can't remember the actual method why this came about. But my father was a teacher of German. So he invited one chap to come down and have Sunday lunch with us, where he could speak. German to him, and I think it was very nice for that chap, looking back, particularly looking back, um, to be part of a family because he clearly missed his family. And I know that after the war, my mother sent them um, shoes and spare clothes. I mean, we didn't have much, but they were obviously in dire straits, so she was kind enough to send them bits and pieces. And do you remember much of this this chap? Yes, he was. Uh, he might, he was rather like a big burly farmer, actually. I, maybe he was. I didn't really know anything about him. His name was Herr Lintz. I'd love to know what happened to him and his family. But um, he was very taken with us, with three children, and, and he obviously loved being in the family, and that's why he made me these, which I'll show you in a minute when Dad said he. And um, I think that was because he missed his family and wanted to do something for us. Yeah. And so was there a, a camp in the area? There somewhere? must have been. There must have been for my father to go and fetch him and bring him back for some lunches, yes. Yes, but I don't remember exactly where it was. I remember. I was allowed to go and chat to these people, which I think is another sign of the times. Would a little girl be allowed off going chatting to prisoners of war? I don't know if they would now, but then it, nobody seemed to bother. Perhaps they didn't care about me, but um, <coughs> you know, I just went off and chatted to them. Yeah. And the ones who you were speaking to, were they working in the fields in the area? Yes, there's one lot that was working in the fields, and there was another lot that was a little further away working on a building site, which was putting up the prefabs that uh, were so important for our people after the war. Yeah. And could you explain a little bit about the, the items that you have, the ones that were made oh, Okay. For he turned up one day with um, two swinging parrots, they're a pair, um, and they balance on these stands which have disintegrated. So the stand is like this, like that. And I won't go in because then they also need to balance on that. And they have a kind of counterweight. I can do it on my finger if I'm careful. With a lead weight here, heaven knows where he got that. and. 
uh, a wooden parrot at the top, with, and it's painted multicolored. It's like a piece of folk art, really. I cannot understand, looking back, where he managed to get paint, because those of us that remember mm. the end of the war, you couldn't get anything. That's right. You get and green, actually. I could get green. Well, yeah. where did he get the red and yellow? I mean, just extraordinary. And uh, these are spotted, grey paint with yellow spots on. Um, so extraordinary. And uh, I thought, because, again, as a child after the war, there were no toys. There was absolutely nothing. So to get these was incredibly special and memorable and lovely. And I treasure them still as a wartime souvenir. But that was in memory of Herr Lintz, so we will find Herr Lintz now on film. That's wonderful. Thank you, wherever you are. And they were given as a gift to they you? They were given as a gift. I think my brother was a little bit jealous because he didn't get any. Do you remember when it was? Which year, approximately? Mm. It's probably about four. It'd be 46, 47, something like that. Yes. And I don't know when he went back. I don't remember any farewells or anything like that. I just remember he came to Sunday lunch and my father talking German to him. Yeah. And that's what I remember. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.